I went with some Fusion 6 inch Marine two way, two way speakers. I love Fusion Audio. I've used them on hundreds of different builds that I've done. Fusion, this is basically a 6 inch speaker, but it's shallow mount. Okay, so the mounting depth is 1 and 9 sixteenths. So it's just a little over an inch and a half. This is the factory speaker. You can see a big difference. Okay, the factory speaker utilizes this one inch ring. Which is what, I still have that one still installed. Problem you run into with this, of course, gonna need a bigger ring. So, I have what's called a Jasper circle jig. This is what I use to cut all of my circles out with for all of my stereo builds that I've done. I usually use them to make the, the outer ring and then you can move it and you can adjust it for every, I think it's a sixteenth of an inch. So you can make any size circle you want. So what I'm doing is I took the cover off of the Fusion speakers. And you can see it's a good waterproof speaker, good surround on it. Everything's sealed, coated, inside and out. But basically, take this and I'll end up measuring what I need, double check all of my measurements, and then take this circle jig and cut it out. Ring. You'll have to take a sander, sand down, or a lot of times it's take concrete. You work on smoothing it off. Then what I want to do is I want to measure, come into the inside, and then make the, make the rest of the ring so I can drop the speaker down. Okay, I've got all of the rings cut out. I left one of them, the very top one, a little bit thinner because it kind of gives the speaker a little bit more airspace because there's not much airspace where it's at but should work out fine glue them all together fill in all the holes with some wood filler sand it down smooth and then paint it with an epoxy paint so hopefully it'll match inside all right got them gluing and then I've, I use the 3M wood filler and then I add a little bit of water to it to make it a little bit soupy so kind of it'll soak in a little better and then hopefully once I get it all done, get it all sanded out smooth, won't look too awkward in the camper. All right, all the rings are cut out, glued, and covered with wood filler. Hopefully it'll smooth out and look okay. I'll start sanding on them here in a little while once I get dry. Okay, I'm pre-drilling everything before I start painting and finish sanding but I had to countersink the original mounting screws so that I can make sure that I don't go all the way through the roof. Because you've only got about an inch between the inside ceiling and the outside of the roof. All right, while I'm waiting on the rings for those speakers to dry, we're gonna start installing the ones on the outside. This is the back side of them. It's behind this nail. The Jayco has just mounted up there. Just two, two screws, move it out of the way. These two, your green is gonna be your positive and the black is gonna be your negative. Pop those off. And then on the outside, there's four screws. You'll take those four screws off and then they've got it sealed to the wall, which is good. 
which you're going to want to redo whenever you put the new speaker in. Which I am going on going with a set of six and a half inch Clarion Marines. I've used Clarion before. I like them. They're good. They work really good on Marine installations. This Clarion uses uh, the CMG 1622R. It's a six and a half inch, fully sealed. All everything's plastic coated. It's 100 watt max, 40 watts continuous, 4 ohm. Good little speaker, work perfect. But that is a 5 inch speaker. So I'm going to go with a 6 inch, which means I'm going to have to make that little hole a little bit bigger to make this one fit. Then what you're going to want to do is reseal everything so you don't end up having water leak down in, um, in between your walls and causing even more problems. So. As you can see, I've already got three of the four screws taken out here. And what you're going to want to do is just take your little putty knife, slide it around, and cut this silicone that Jaco did a great job of wiping the excess off. And once you get all of that off, the speaker will come right out. Okay, I went all the way around it, got all this putty. Now, just pull the speaker, the speaker comes right out. All right. What you're going to want to do is you're going to take, want to take and throw this in the trash. But you want to clean all of that off best you can. All right. Once you get it cleaned off pretty good, don't have to be perfect because you're going to end up having to cut a little bit if you go with a larger speaker. If you don't go with a larger speaker, then you don't have to cut it out. So basically, I made a template using part of the speaker box that it came in along with um, the speaker. Just made my own cutout, my own template. Right. You can see how much larger this speaker is going to be than the other one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to end up marking that and then I'm going to take a Dremel and then go around this and cut it out as smooth as I can. Before I take a Dremel to it, I'm probably going to take a razor blade and etch this fiberglass so I don't have to worry about the fiberglass splintering once I cut it. Right. What I used on my Dremel was just like you would use to cut drywall, wood and stuff like that. Small side cutting bit. Only thing with is with trying to cut like this, it's hard to get a complete perfect straight circle, but you can get it pretty close. Always cut it a little short so that way you can sand it it's easier to sand off fiberglass than it is to try and put it back up there. And I always just cut out the first hole with a lot of the stereos that I've built. I've learned that you don't always need a bigger hole in the back as you do the front. So always test it first. If you want the bigger hole, which granted if you cut a bigger hole in the back will help with sound. So I'm gonna do a test fit, see if I need to cut the back out. If I do, I will. If I don't, I won't. All right. There's a test fit of speaker. Just set it up there. Looks like it's a good fit, other than me cleaning off a little bit more of the silicone and then getting ready to re-silicone it back in place. And then once you screw it into place, just put the new cover back on it. There you go. Now, something I did not mention earlier but I am now. Before you cut, place that piece of board that you were using, or that Jacob was using to partition where this speaker was. Put it up there, and that'll keep you from getting a whole lot of sawdust inside. You're still gonna end up with some, just cause the way, take a little vacuum, that's not big of a deal. But, would have been a whole lot worse had not all of it blown outside. Now, one other thing that I want to do is I'm going to test fit it and see what it looks like back here if I need to cut that hole open anymore. All right, here's what it looks like from the back side. 
got plenty of room for airspace to flow but I don't like the way those terminals are so I'm gonna just make me a small little notch right there so those terminals set out a little bit easier have a little bit of easier access to them all right this board on the inside is thin enough I just took a razor blade notched it out came out perfect now I have easy access to the terminals now to just silicone it in so I don't have any leaks then should be done with this one and we'll move on to the next one what's the next one As you can see got to be careful with your wiring over here because the speaker is directly behind the head unit also if you can see cleaned up the speakers and the wiring a little bit there's still quite a bit back there but it's way better than it was and I'll probably end up zip tying a few of those together just to keep them tighter also whenever you do it close your cabinets That'll also keep some of the dust inside and out of your camper. But you'll still end up with some. Okay, to seal it, I'm just using a regular Loctite clear silicone. Works on bathtubs, it works on glass, it works on fiberglass, and everything else. So, what I am gonna end up doing is I will put a bead around where the speaker is gonna sit, where the old silicone was. Get it cleaned off the best you can. I could take some mineral spirits to get a little bit more of it off, but this stuff will adhere, adhere to it anyways. Also, what I'm gonna do while I've got it open is I'm gonna run a bead of silicone right here along where the fiberglass is. So it seals all of that also. So I don't have to worry about any moisture getting behind my fiberglass and causing additional problems also. Whenever you get ready to glue it in, make sure you've got all of your stuff handy. Get the speaker, get it easily accessible. Also, get you some stainless steel screws. The screws that Jayco used are not stainless steel and eventually would cause problems. Not much because they were sealed really good. I will give it to that much, but go with stainless steel screws just in case because you don't want to have a screw rust out, have bigger problems later. Also, if you don't know, whenever you're putting on silicone, you're going to want to put a bead around the outside of the speaker. So whenever you go around the outside of it, get a little water on your fingers and that'll help you smooth it out. Help because whenever you go around your fingers wet, that'll always help it out. Okay. So I had an afterthought after I already cut the first hole out and getting ready to cut the second one out. I'm trying to keep from getting as much styrofoam fiberglass dust inside the cabinet less to clean out why i didn't think of this earlier i don't know so i'm going to tape up the hole before i cut it out all right so i got the other speaker pulled off i figured i'd just show this just for entertainment purposes as you can tell jayco obviously had a hard time installing the factory speakers considering they drilled one two three four five six seven eight holes so apparently I guess they couldn't decide which direction or if they ended upside down or what they did. So we're gonna fix that. Okay, with me having to compensate for the extra holes that Jayco decided to drill, I had to off-center a little bit. So the inside, as you can tell, won't work like it did on the other one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a razor blade from the inside and trim this circle out to where I can fit the speaker in without having to do any more to the outside. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of sandpaper and sand down the jagged edges on this like I did on the other one. All right, both of them are installed, completely sealed and working. Everything's completely reinstalled. Haven't made up my mind if I'm gonna put leave this where it's at or move it, wrap up the speakers in a little piece of conduit or something like that and mount it there. But for right now, I'm just gonna leave it where Jayco had it because I don't really have anything in the cabinet anyways. Now, 
only thing left to do is finish the insides. Hopefully those will be sanded and ready to go by my next set of days off.